Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live at Five. It's Tuesday, August 13th. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Paul Montori. And we're here in the studio with Miss Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And her jazz hands. And I'm very excited because... From the Broadway smash, Oklahoma. Who's here, Beth? Will Brill Ooh. is here. Don't you love names that rhyme like that? Will Brill, Will Brill. Thank Will you, Will. Brill. So good. For rhyming your name. We will get to Will, but first, our top five. The Scrooge is coming to Broadway. You love Scrooge. I love Scrooge. You love, who doesn't love Scrooge? Scrooge? Everyone loves Scrooge. Ebenezer, who we're talking about. Right? Oh, Ebenezer. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge. Uh, he is, of course, the main character in A Christmas Carol. I don't know how many times Christmas Carol has been on Broadway in different forms. Should have I, I should have I nailed down that statistic before yes. we went live. But mm-hmm. the Charles Dickens classic is coming back this holiday season in a brand new adaptation. Uh, from Jack Thorne, who of course wrote Harry Potter and the Cursed Child and the book to King Kong. Yep. And Matthew Warkus is directing it. Uh, they are both very talented people. They are. So I They're this very be British. Good. Yes. And this was already a hit at, at London's um, Old, old Vic. Vic. I, you know, the old Not young the young thing. Vic. The old young thing <laughs> throws me off. The old Vic. We've been there. It, what's That's the where Vic? Groundhog Day started. Was that the old Vic? Mm hmm. See, because I like to think the old Vic's like the classics and the young Vic's like the... But then, anyway, uh, it was a big hit there. Now it's coming to Broadway. And Campbell Scott. Campbell he, Scott. He, he comes from a fancy family, right? He certainly does. Yeah. And he also was in uh, a Julia Roberts movie. Remember that? That was a while ago. But most recently... <laughs> most recently... It was, he was called annoyed. Dying Young. He was fantastic. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he's also been on Broadway in... Ah, Wilderness. That was also a long time ago. Yeah. He was most uh, recently The Real Thing. Off. I'm doing an order. Uh, the Real no. Thing, Hay Fever, Longest Journey Into Night, Noise is Off. Uh, that Thank was you. The last time. That he was the last time. Probably, he was right? Yeah, he's fantastic. Oh, and it says right here he was in Dying Young. Thank you for including that. There, and there House you of go. Cards. Anyway, this is a, is a holiday run. Oh, including Christmas Carol. There's songs in it. Joy to the. I'm learning things as I read it. I'm sorry. Joy to the <laughs> it's World. It's a cold read, ladies and gentlemen. Be in there. Silent Night is going to be in there. We oh, added look some at songs. That. Previews start November 7th. It opens November 20th. It's a limited run through January 5th because, let's face it, after January Christmas. 1st. We're limited, moving on. Very limited interest. You in know, it's already things. Halloween, according to New York City <laughs> stores. So there you go. <laughs> uh, it's at the Lyceum Theater. Go see it. And 20 years later, these stars are getting back together for this Broadway production. This is some crazy pants news. It's exciting. It's so exciting. Okay. You guys, in 1997, there was a play called How I Learned to Drive. It blew both of our it minds. It blew our minds. It was at the Vineyard Theater. Paula Vogel wrote it, and she won a Pulitzer Prize, and it starred Mary Louise Parker and David oh, Morse. Oh, they were so good in it. They were what so good in it. What are they up to? Well, Mary Louise Parker, you're, you need to calm down. Mary Louise <laughs> Parker and David Morse are reuniting to do the show on the Broadway with their original director, Mark Brokaw. Did you Amazing. see? I didn't have to look down for this yet, but now I will. Uh, it will be at the Samuel J. Friedman Theater beginning March 27th. And mm-hmm. opening on April 22nd. It's a tough story. But uh, yes, Mary Louise with, Parker plays a little big bit. Themes. David Morris plays Uncle Peck. And they have a complicated and distasteful relationship. But it's a really great play. Mary Louise Parker is starting. She's in rehearsals now, I think, for The Sound Inside. Isn't That's that right. also she's at the a, Friedman? She's just never leaving that world. She's just going to stay there, keep her dressing room and Can go. Can I make a prediction that David okay. Morris... And Mary Louise Parker are now the front runners for the Tony Awards. Ooh. Also, David Morse most recently was seen on Broadway in The Iceman Cometh. Oh, yeah. And he great. was fantastic. Yeah. So, something to look forward to in the spring. And audiences across the country are going to be able to go way down to Hades Town. This is news to nobody. This is a surprise. But we're to excited, nobody. nevertheless. Exactly. Uh, Hades Town is going on a national tour. Why? Because it's a big hit and it won the Tony, and that's what you do. That's how we do. Yep. The, the national tour will start fall 2020. It'll play more than 30 cities, including all of your favorite cities. I don't have to list them. All 30 of them. <laughs> all 30 of your favorite cities. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you can also see it on Broadway casting, TBA, so calm down. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be sure to let you know when they cast all those important roles. But um, for now, it's just news of a tour. Hades Town, coming Weird to you. Weird timing, though, because normally you announce these things right before the Tony Awards to help get votes. But you know what? Hades Town didn't need votes. They took their time. They were like, we got the Tony. <laughs> we'll do it later. We'll just we'll surprise the kids in the summer. And there you go. Here we are. It's so coming. surprised. In like a year. You got to calm down. I mean, the, the tour news is always so early. In a year, you can see Hades Town That's in right. Minneapolis. <laughs> there it is. And this American <laughs> Idol is going to the Bronx. You know, speaking of national tours, a Bronx Tale yeah. has a national tour. Yeah, yeah. And 
2015, American Idol. Did you know American Idol was still around 2015? I didn't know this. Uh, it's still American Idol. Now, I didn't know that either. Back. 2015 American Idol winner Nick Fradiani. It's he won. Fradiani. I've never seen American Idol. I admit it now. Will Clint lead the Clint. national tour. He's, he's as charming. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. He's going to play Lorenzo. That's the dad. Originated on Broadway by Richard H. Blake. Mm. Uh, this will kick off its second year traveling across the country at Connecticut, Connecticut Waterbury, Connecticut Palace. Theater on October 22nd before embarking on a 22 week tour to 34 cities. I am not going to list them here because Will Brill is with us. But catch a Bronx Tale with Nick Fradiani and see an American Idol winner in the flesh. On that note, Paul. No, no. That's it? Oh, no, we, we have more to say. Yeah, oh, stop I keep. To, I know you want to interview Will Brill, but calm down, Beth. I have some He's important got news to, to pedal. announce. I want to say what he's doing. Let her cute I intro to line. Let me do my intro. Beth. I'm sorry. Jesus, I'm sorry. Beth. I'm excited to get you out of here. Well, I just wanted to say <laughs> that a Tony nominee has got an awesome oh, new yeah. screen gig. Come on. We are speaking. We'll keep it short because <laughs> Beth is in a rush. <laughs> but Ashley Park. We love, love Ashley Park. Park. She, of love course, it. was just in Mean Girls, and we just saw her on Netflix and that in, in the, the uh, Tales of the City mm -hmm. reboot. She's got a lot going on. Don't make that she's face. She's coming back. Um, she's getting a lot of TV work, and now she is. She's in Paris right now because she's going to start a new TV show called Emily in Paris. Ashley's in Paris filming Emily in Paris. It's a new TV show for the Paramount Network, and Where is uh, it get set? this created by. Darren, Darren Star, Star. who of course not only created Sex in the City but also Younger. Starring one of our other favorites, Tony Winter, Foster. Foster. Anyway, Lily Collins is the other star, and Lily Collins plays Emily, a strong-minded Midwesterner, kind of girl that can see Hades Town in a year, <laughs> who relocates <laughs> to Paris for a new job, and she finds a friend in an au pair named Mindy, who's also an American living in Paris, and Mindy is played by Ashley Park. I That's knew it was going to come around to some point yep. that we can. And it's yes. happening right now, and Ashley Park's in Paris, and when she's back in New York. Ashley Park will be here talking about the Staying show. in Paris. Emily in Paris, Ashley in New York. Got it. <laughs> I mean, I don't have it, but I, I'm going to say Brill. it. Will Brill in Oklahoma. Will Brill <laughs> in Oklahoma. There are a couple more things on the site that we oh. can point out to you. Sarah Brellis is going to release unheard waitress songs on a new EP. Ooh. Jasmine Cephas Jones and Grace McLean will join Peter Dinklage in Cyrano at the new group. Well, I just want to say that Sarah Burrell's album has a great name. It's called What's Not Inside. Mm -hmm. the original what's Not called what's Inside. inside yeah. That's good title. That Genius. Good title. And also, didn't they just confirm Harry Styles? Isn't he actually Prince Eric I think now? Yeah. No, I, well, I saw, it, I saw it on Apparently Twitter. The, the newest level of potential confirmation. He might, I don't know. I it's will also like to say that we ha are un unveiling a new Leslie Kritzer vlog at Beetlejuice. And yes, there are some real housewives of Beetlejuice. It's a thing. What's Ooh. that vlog called? That vlog is called Seize the Deo. Nice. I didn't sing it. Good work. I'm not about. singing. Damn. Yeah. Okay. On that note, I'm excited because Will Brill is here. Yep. So, Paul, thank you. Okay. Caitlin, tell us about our guest, please. Gladly. Yes. We do, in fact, have Will Brill here with us today. You guys can currently see him in the Tony-winning Oklahoma. Um, he has previously been seen on Broadway in Act One, and you can't take it with you. Some of his off-Broadway credits include Illyria, Tribes, and Our Town. He is also known for his screen roles in On the OA in The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. He's great. Follow him on social media at Will Brill. It's very easy. It rhymes. It's great. Leave all of your questions in the comments below. And please welcome Will and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Hey, Will. Hi, Beth. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are I was you? really excited to interview you. I'm so excited to be here. Tell me. You're fabulous in this show. Yes. Hey, thanks so much. Look, look, yeah, yeah, I'm getting seconded. <laughs> I'm getting seconded. It's not just me. It's, the, it's a lot of people. It's a fun, weird thing, and I've been given a lot of um, freedom to be as fun and weird as I like to be, so I feel very lucky about that. I love that. <laughs> Let's get into it. Please. So this character, Allie Hackham, is an outsider. Sure. He's a peddler. Sure. He's a foreigner. Yeah. Tell me what you got to... And, Tell me what you got to bring to this role. And of course, this is the Daniel Fish, Oklahoma. This is not the one you saw in high school. Yeah, it's, it's something different. weird. There's <laughs> there's some, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say, I'll temper that just a little bit and say that, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about this Oklahoma being something uh, really far afield and something totally reimagined. And I think there's uh, truth to that. But I think also Oklahoma's a really... Um, great, amazing piece of theater, and I think we uh, do as much um, honor to it as we possibly can. And I think we actually go far enough to really honor all of the text that's in there that is sometimes sort of like pushed Lost aside. Over. Yeah, 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 exactly. 
Um, Ali Hackam, I, so I had no, um, I didn't have a history with this show when I came to it. When I, uh, I came and I saw Daniel's production of it, and my mind was sort of blown. And I had um, only heard about it. I had heard about this character, Ali Hackam, and seeing it, uh, the thing that really moved me um, to th think about this character in sort of a new way is that while he's often played as He's for sure an outsider. He's definitely not a part of the world of the people who are on stage. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's necessarily uh, a foreigner in the way that these people view him. Mm -hmm. And He's uh, part of the community, is that what you he's mean? He's not a part of the community, but he is um, happy to take on whatever role somebody wants to put on him and mm -hmm. use that to his advantage. There's something very... Um, shystery about him and if uh, somebody believes something about him that is going to help him get something that he wants he's happy to exploit it um, which is a true salesman yeah yeah truly <laughs> and that's um, that's fun and weird and uh, opens up a lot of doors for me to go far <laughs> tell me some of the the thought work or character work you did going into this show because of course some people who had been working on the show have been working on it for years yeah and you came to it a little bit fresher. Yeah, I got to uh, I got to come in with a lot of my own ideas, and Daniel being, uh, you know, a real sweetheart and um, a real visionary was sort of was very um, easygoing as far as if if I whatever I brought into the room, as long as it did not disrupt the vision of the show, he was very down to just let people play, which is. Um, really lovely for an actor because you get to um, let your freak flag fly. Um, so tell us what freaky things you brought along I, with you. I, what what so, thoughts? Some of the things that I can't turn off in my own work is, uh, you know, I, I uh, Ali Hackam straddles two worlds in this mm -hmm. play. He's uh, definitely a big part of this comedic track with Will Parker and Ado Annie, but he also sort of dabbles in the world of Lori and Curly and Judd and so I initially came into this thinking like, oh, this is going to be a dark, serious, you know, really yeah. real take on Ali Hackam. <laughs> and um, I have like a weird body and like to um, use it in weird ways. So I'm doing a lot of weird body stuff in this um, you production. You have to see it to believe it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And Daniel, bless his heart, uh, just let me do that. Um, and John Higginbotham, our amazing choreographer, um, were, were really welcoming uh, as as far as that goes, there's something there's something also very freeing about playing somebody who's kind of a villain, somebody who has nobody else's interests at heart, somebody who's just trying to and no get sidekick. What he he's wants. just really his own. He's really guy. yeah. He's keeps a, his own counsel. Yeah, yeah. He's a loner and he is um, a weirdo and he uh, r really takes advantage of that. It's very fun. Okay, let's time travel. Not Please. too far back into the past, but okay. we're going to get there. Let's time travel to Tony night. Sure. Tell me how that night went down, because not only did you guys win Best Revival, but when Ali Stroker won, oh, man. I mean, <laughs> the, the wor I think the world exploded. I was going to yeah. say Radio City Music Hall exploded, but I think it was actually bigger than it that. It was really, it was so um, special, because the whole, the whole day of the Tonys is, is a real whirlwind. I mean, you go to Radio City Music Hall, and... Uh, you, you don't have time to think about what you're doing. The only moment that you really have to focus on what's happening it was the moment after we finish, finished rehearsing the opening number and they didn't cut off the applause from, from our dress rehearsal audience and we got one sort of one second to take in like, oh, we're at Radio City Music Hall. This is extraordinary. This is a dream come true. And then, um, you know, the day went on. You're very, very tired. You re really rely on your adrenaline rush mm -hmm. to get you through the Tonys. And then you walk off stage after your performance, and people usher you straight out into the street, and you get on a bus, and the bus takes you back to your theater. And immediately after we got back to the theater, um, Allie's... Uh, award was announced, her name was called, and we were streaming on a cell phone in the basement of Circle in the Square. Oh, wow. And so the entire cast, I, I have a video on my mm -hmm. phone actually, of our entire cast huddled around one cell phone watching Ali win. And just like, a lot. Of, there's a lot of shouting, a lot of dancing, a lot of crying, um, and then a lot of that, hush. That was just you. Yeah, just me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody else is like, keep it down, Will, e easy. Um, but then, uh, but yeah, it was extraordinary. It was really, and then I went home later that night 
and watch the video like three more times with my wife because it's uh, it was so fun and moving and uh, special. All right, let's time travel again. Okay. Uh, you were and you can't take it with you on mm -hmm. Broadway. You were your character is married to Annalie Ashford's yes character. Tell me about being married to Annalie Ashford, the worst dancer on Broadway in that show, not in real life. <laughs> it was <laughs> such a dream. I mean, and James Earl Jones. I mean, James this Earl is Jones, a crazy, Rose Byrne, wonderful. Fran Kranz, Christine Nielsen. Uh, it was really, truly uh, an extraordinary uh, thing to be a part of. Um, ev everybody was so sweet and generous. And Scott Ellis, another director who opens the doors wide open and lets everybody do whatever they want, only to then sort of say, like, let's tighten up this moment here, mm. let's tighten up this here. He's a real, just such a gem of a director. Because who, he was an actor, probably, so yeah. he knows how to work with actors. Yeah, yeah. So and you got to fly your freak flag then as well. I sure did. I sure you did. You got to play an instrument. What instrument did you play? Oh, that man, show? I got to, this, if there is, uh, if there, there's no greater dream come true than being taught to play the xylophone <laughs> by Jason Robert Brown. I, I just, I... Do you ever want to go into the Oklahoma band and say like I I'm actually yeah. a Broadway musician? I do. I say I say often. I'm like, homies, give me some spoons, <laughs> and we will really make this a jam. Yeah, you know? I really would love to see that. Um, they're gonna take me up on that now. <laughs> it's gonna be terrifying. They're gonna throw spoons at you. Um, yeah. yeah. But no, that show was so great. I mean, Annalie has uh, a brain that does not end. She. I mean, in our first day of rehearsal, we spent so much time on her entrance because she had hundreds of ideas. She's mm. impossible to turn off, and they're all, each one, amazing. And I, I remember Scott saying, they're all brilliant. Choose whatever you want. But pick one. Do whatever you want. You're going <laughs> to win the Tony for whatever you choose. And she did. And she did. So. I think it's because of you that these women are winning Tonys. I mean, it's just Thank you. It's possible. It's Thank possible. you. All right, I know you guys have questions True. because I can see her scrolling. I'm scrolling. So, Caitlin, what are our viewers asking? Yes, definitely. Okay, so Emmy wants to know what is it like being able to see the audience as you're performing yeah, and the what's, house are up. what goes through your mind when you see weird things? Well, <laughs> Emmy, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, I've gone on a real roller coaster with this because uh, there's. There's a, a number of different things that happen in the audience. There are uh, people who are super engaged, and there are people who are also super engaged with their program. And then there are um, people who don't really know how to, uh, uh, or if there is a right way to respond to something. So they'll laugh, and then they'll taper their laugh, and then uh, so it's really, it's really. Um, uh, it can be very nerve wracking. It can also be extremely rewarding to have. I mean, I think the reason that any actor gets into this business is to um, connect with people mm. and to be able to do it that palpably is um, the dream. Tell us about an interaction that you can, like a recent interaction that comes to mind. Um, sure. Uh, I had, uh, I had, uh, so, so Ali Stroker um, makes contact with a couple of people throughout the show and the other day she um, rolled up and sang to this boy who's sitting at a table, this very young man, and to watch him like just explode with joy, laugh oh. so hard. And what's amazing about it is it gets the entire audience to rally around those moments too. It's, um, you, you can sort of plot uh, the, ex the audience's experience of our show from before Can't Say No and after mm -hmm. Can't Say No. It's really um, extraordinary. Love that. Yeah. Um, Elise wants to know what advice would you give to your character? Oh, oh. geez. <laughs> oh man. And would he take it? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a very good <laughs> valid, question too. Valid question. Um, I, what a great question. Um, I would say, uh, Ali, um, don't bite off more than you can chew, <laughs> and um, you know, uh. uh you could stand to like lend a helping hand um, mm -hmm. w once in your life. No, he will not take no. that advice. Like, don't be a jerk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. No. He's not gonna take that. Mm -mm. So that. if you were a peddler, what would you be selling? Um, smiles, you know, <laughs> joy. How much? How um, much? Is that free or? Oh, for the price of uh, a hug or a high five, for you choose. For the price of a ticket to Oklahoma. There you go. <laughs> 
love that. That went cheesier than I was expecting. Um, <laughs> let's let's do one, one more, more question. One more. Sure. one more question. And Georgia wants to know what is it like to work with these amazing actors in your show, and what is it just like being able to work just with everybody in Tell Oklahoma? Us everything. It's such a blast. I mean, it's so easy. Frankly, mm. it's um, it's really lovely to. I mean, we start the show, all of us on stage with each other, and there is so much trust and care between every actor on that stage. It makes it incredibly easy to do the show every night. Um, and and really, really fun. I mean, it feels like a family. It's great. Now I'm gonna ask the important journalistic questions. Yeah. Do you come home smelling like chili every night? <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> um, I eat, this is not, an exaggeration, and I'm embarrassed to say it, but I'm gonna lean into it. Let's I eat it. four to eight pieces of cornbread a day during this show. <laughs> what? I know, it's horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I also ride my bike to and from the theater, right. so I'm getting well, so like 16 miles of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I eat tons of cornbread. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and you too can eat cornbread. So I'm just gonna keep doing that. Sure. At Oklahoma. Come on down, Come it's on down. really delicious. The show, too, I mean. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for being here, Will. Thanks so much for having me. So much fun to talk to you. Caitlin, will you take us on out, please? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to Andrew Pollack all about Bad Out of Hell.